Hi everyone, my name is Mr Barlow. Welcome to episode 1 of the VCE Biology Podcast. This episode covers part of Unit 1, Area of Study 1, and I'll be talking about the scientific method, organic and inorganic molecules, and a few general principles of biology. So the VCE Biology Podcast is obviously all about biology. But what is biology? Well, the word biology is derived from two Greek words. The first word is bio, which means life. The second word is logos, which means to talk about, or really it means the study of. So putting them together, bio and logos makes biology. So therefore, biology is the study of life, or really the study of living things. So biologists, like all scientists, add to a worldwide body of knowledge and they do it by doing experiments. Now, when they do experiments, ideally they follow something called the scientific method. So to explain the scientific method, I'm going to run through some of the terms, and then I'm going to try and give you an example to, I suppose, bring it all together. So, when you're going to perform a scientific experiment, you need to have a hypothesis, and that's an educated guess or a possible explanation to what you think might happen. So, if your experimental hypothesis ends up being proven by a series of experiments, it may end up being called a theory or a principle, and it'll add to the worldwide body of knowledge, and it'll be accepted by biologists around the world. Now, when you're planning an experiment, something you need to think about is you need to think about your variables. So these are things in an experiment which can change. So an experiment should have an independent variable, And that's the thing in the experiment that you're going to change. There's also in an experiment a dependent variable. That's the thing in an experiment that you're going to measure. And always in an experiment, there's always going to be a whole bunch of other variables or things that can change. But ideally, all those other variables, you'll control them and you'll keep them all the same. And what what they are called is they're called controlled variables. And therefore, you'll end up having a controlled experiment. So I'll give you an example of a really basic biology experiment. Let's say I wanted to find out whether a gum tree would grow better in the light or if it would grow better in the dark. Now my hypothesis for that experiment would probably be that gum trees are going to grow better in the light than they are in the dark. And then if I was going to set up a controlled experiment, ideally what I'd do is I'd get two gum trees, I'd put one in the light, I'd put one in the dark, and then I'd go back and measure them probably every day and I'd see which one is growing better. So that's a really basic experiment. So the independent variable in that experiment, the one that I change, is the amount of light that I give the two trees. So one tree I'd give light, the other tree I'd give no light, that's what I change, so that's the independent variable. The dependent variable, so that's the variable that I measure, that's going to be how much each tree grows, and I'll measure it in meters. So the dependent variable is the amount of growth of each gum tree. Now, there are a whole bunch of other variables that could come into play here. For example, I could give one of the trees heaps of water, and I could give the other tree not much water at all. But of course, that's going to maybe change my results, so it's not going to make it a fair scientific test. You know, I could also change the temperature. I could put one of the trees in in hot temperatures, one of the trees in cold temperatures, but that's another variable which I would not want to have. So all these other variables are variables that I'll try and control, and therefore by controlling them or keeping them constant, they won't affect the result, and it'll yeah be a fair scientific test. So that was a basic run through of the scientific method. And the next thing I want to talk about are a couple of important principles in biology. So as I said before, biology is the study of life and living things are called organisms. But how do you decide if something is a living thing or an organism? Well, it turns out that all organisms share some common characteristics. So all living things or all organisms move They all perform cellular respiration, which is basically the way that living things get the energy they need to survive. They all respond to stimuli uh, in their environment, so they can respond to touch or smell or light or gravity, uh, different things depending on different organisms. Uh, They all grow, 
so all living things do grow they all reproduce and make more living things they all excrete some materials some wastes that they don't need anymore all living things obtain nutrition so obtain things from their environment to enable them to you know to live and grow um, and also importantly all living things are composed of cells so all living things basically have all of those things in common <laughs> So that takes us on to another really important concept in biology, and that is, of course, the cell theory. So this theory says that all organisms are made up of cells, and cells are the basic building blocks of living things. All cells come from pre-existing cells, so a cell can't just appear out of nothing. You know, one cell divides to make a new cell. And the cell is the smallest living organizational unit. So, you know, the human body is made up of trillions of cells and trees are made up of cells and bacteria is made up of well, one cell, but all living things are made up of cells. Now, all cells have got some similar characteristics. So all cells have got what's called a plasma membrane, and this is kind of the outside of the cell and it keeps the cell together. All cells have got cytoplasm. This is some stuff inside the cell. Uh, and all cells have also got DNA. Some cells have got DNA in something called the nucleus, and some cells just have, you know, free floating DNA. But if you think, if you think of a water balloon, the plasma membrane would be like the, well, the rubber, you know, balloon part of it. The cytoplasm would be like the water inside the balloon, and, you know, in a cell, this has actually got lots of other things in it, you know, dissolved in it, or other bigger things in it. Uh, and the DNA would be, well, in a water balloon, you wouldn't have any, but <laughs> cells have also got DNA in them, and, and they can, that controls the cell. So all cells have plasma membrane, cytoplasm, and DNA. So another really important biological concept that I'll just briefly run through in this episode is evolution. So evolution is basically um, the change in the um, composition of a species over generational time, so over a long period of time. And evolution can result in the development of a species and, in fact, the development of um, brand new species. So evolution explains why there are so many and so many different types of living things on this planet. So from the deepest, darkest fishes at the bottom of the ocean to the birds in the sky to us to plants to funguses to bacteria, there's just so many living things on this planet. And, you know, really, that's what biology studies, all of those living things. So next up, I'd like to talk or give a basic overview of some um, biochemistry. Uh, and to do that, I'll just basically talk about the difference between organic and inorganic molecules. So organic molecules are, again, basically carbon-containing molecules. And there are four main types of organic molecules. That is carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. Uh, now, vitamins are also organic mo molecules, um, but they're not one of the four main types. So organic molecules can be very, very large molecules, and they're actually composed of smaller subunits. So a very large molecule contained of smaller subunits is called a polymer, and the small subunits are called monomers. So carbohydrates, for example, the subunits are monosaccharides, uh, and the polymer is called a polysaccharide. Uh, carbohydrates contain the elements carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Um, carbo means carbon. Hydra is hydrogen, and chemi when chemists put eight at the end of uh, a molecule, it means it's got oxygen in it. Um, an example of a uh, carbohydrate monosaccharide would be glucose, uh, and a, a, an example of a um, polysaccharide or a you know, carbohydrate polymer would be starch or even cellulose. Uh, next up, in terms of organic molecules, there's lipids, so you know these are fats. Um, they contain the elements carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and phosphorus, and they're composed of um, monomers or subunits called fatty acids. Um, lipids are really important. You know, for example, the plasma membrane of cells is is made up of lipids. Uh, proteins, uh, you know, proteins are in your muscles, uh, and they make up enzymes. Their subunits are amino acids. So proteins are big, long chains of amino acids. They contain the elements carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, uh, and they also contain the element nitrogen. 
uh, the next class of organic molecule is nucleic acids. So for example, DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid, or RNA, ribonucleic acid. Uh, DNA contains the elements carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and phosphorus. And the subunits of nucleic acids are called nucleotides. So that's a little bit about organic molecules. So the other type of molecule is an inorganic molecule. So that's basically everything except for organic molecules. So everything else. So it means um, carbon dioxide, oxygen, water, uh, minerals. These are all things that are really important for life, but they're not molecules which have been created by living things. So you know, that, that's something important. Organic molecules are, have been created by living things and inorganic molecules haven't been created by living things. Another simple way I like to um, think about them is that organic molecules are generally bigger and more complicated than inorganic molecules. You know, DNA is an enormous molecule with um, millions of um, atoms that make it up, but water on the other hand is only three atoms. You know, it's H, two H's and an O, and carbon dioxide is three atoms. Um, so organic molecules are often a lot bigger and far more complicated than inorganic molecules. And that brings episode one of the VC Biology Podcast to a close. I'm Mr. Barlow and thanks for listening.